this, ladies and gentlemen. What we notice is we have three angles, all right? Now, we know that there is a relationship between these two angles, right? Those are both interior angles, and they're both on the same side. Therefore, we call those, Alexander, do you remember? When they're on the same side and they're both interior? No? Zach, do you remember? What happens when they're both interior on the same side of the transversal? We call them? Consecutive interior. But here's the problem. Remember, consecutive interior angles are supplementary, meaning they add up to 180. So if I was to write an equation for this, I would have 8x minus 10 plus 6y plus 20 equals 180. The problem with that is I have two variables and only one equation. When you guys talk about systems of equations, when we have two variables, we have to have two different equations. So even though that is a good angle relationship, since we have two different variables, we can't solve it that way. So what we're going to do is say, all right, well, how about then let's just deal with the angles with the x's. Forget about the angle with the y for right now. Let's just deal with the angles of the x's. So Sierra, do you know how these two angles relate to each other? Are they interior or exterior? Interior between the parallel lines. All right. And all right. So the interior and the interior lines are on the same side or alternating sides? Alternate. alternating. So we call them? Alternate interior angles. And we know alternate interior angles, how do they relate to each other? They're, they're, They're equal in measure, right? So therefore, we can set up an equation 8x minus 10 equals 7x. And please, ladies and gentlemen, let's get in the habit. If you apply a theorem, let's write it down. Alternate interior, right? I decided that those two angles are equal to each other because I know alternate interior angles are equal in value when we have parallel lines. Sorry, I forgot to add that on the figure, right? The figure had parallel lines. And they're only equal in measure when you have parallel lines. So now, let's go ahead and solve. OK. So now I get x equals 10. All right. So now, ladies and gentlemen, I can figure out the value for each one of these. So if I say x equals 10, I could say 8 times 10 minus 10 equals that angle. And then I have 7 times 10. Well, that's going to equal 70. And that equals 70. Right? So therefore, these two angles, instead of using equations, I'm now going to write in their value. So that's 70 degrees. And that's 70 degrees. Does everybody agree with what I did? I just took the value of x, plugged it into those equations to find my now measure of my angle. Now the last thing I need to do is determine how does 6y and 20 relate to 70? Blake, do you have any idea? How are these two angles related? They're not on parallel lines. They're just on a line, but they're being cut by transversal. But they make up a what? What do these two angles, when you add them up, make up? They make up a line, so therefore we we'll call them supplementary, right? And they're also a adjacent. Since they're adjacent and supplementary, another vocabulary word is a linear pair. And linear pair, again, is supplementary. So then, last one, ladies and gentlemen, I know that this times this adds up to 180. So 6y plus 20 plus 70 degrees equals 180 degrees. All right, so now we can just go ahead and solve. So this becomes 6y equals 90. Oh, I'm sorry, 6y plus 90 equals 180. Subtract 90 degrees. So therefore, I have 6y equals 90. And therefore, divide by 6 y equals 50. So there you go. We figured out what the value of x was, and we figured out the value of y was by using our relationship of parallel lines and also remembering supplementary angles, which you guys cannot forget. Right? Whenever two angles make up a line, that's, you're going to have supplementary angles.